so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna show you how to do some eyeshadow, an eyeshadow, one eyeshadow look, not some eyeshadow looks. I'm gonna use the Urban Decay Vice Limited Edition palette. And I just got it, so I'm taking the little plastic off. So here are the colors. Here's what it looks like. You may have seen it, you know, on other people's channels or whatever. And my review isn't that great of it. I mean, I'll admit, there's some colors like Provocateur, this one here, that is just like a chunky, um, chunky, glittery, like it's super, super chunky, just like a gl pinky glitter chunk is basically, basically what it is. Let's see if it'll, I can get it to focus. But that one, and then, can we talk about Goddess? This one? It is the worst. I mean, I know it's it's like sand. You touch it and it's just, it comes, it swatches okay on the finger. So as you can see, but it's just like this chunky. So when you put it on your hand, it just like, it's this chunky, it's not nearly as pigmented. And I'm sure when you put it on your eye, it's probably just powders away because the glitter is just, I don't know, it's not good. But there are some pretty awesome shades. Like this one called Heat is amazing. It's super pigmented, soft. Um, it's one of the reasons I wanted this palette. Uh, pretty pretty awesome there. It's an orange, orangey color and it's unique I think to most people's uh, collections. You can see it's swatched there, it swatches beautifully. So, um, you know, there's some, there's some awesome colors and quality and Urban Decay is amazing quality shadows. So, um, there's also one called Road Stripe and I guess I could try to swatch it here and see if it shows up, but it's, a, it looks, it looks white in the pan. Let's see if I can do this without, so it looks white. It's this one here. It looks white in the pan, but when you swatch it, it's like an iridescent color. Let's see if it's going to show up there. Yeah, it kind of shows up. So like an iridescent pink, I think, yeah, pinky, kind of purpley white color. So that's, that's a unique color too. It's pretty. So I was thinking, since a lot of people like neutrals and, you know, neutrals are fun, I might do a neutral with like a pop of color kind of look today. So I think I'll start, well, I'm going to put on some Urban Decay Primer Potion first. So I like Eden. That's my favorite one of the Urban Decay. I have other primer potions. And this one I'm actually trying to finish up so I can move on to using some of my other potion, um, other primers, not primer potions. So this one's like really thick and you only need a little bit and it really like cancels out any of the color on your eyes. And I always use a primer. Um, even if sometimes all I use is a primer, if like I just want to cancel out any color and just put on like mascara or something just to you know, make mattify my eye and just kind of give it a little bit more life. Um, I'll use something like this. So, and I like to put my brow color on first. So there's not really a good um, brow color in here. I mean, I guess this color anonymous here, you know, would be okay. That one's too shiny. It's like a, and it's iridescent. So I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it will work. But um, maybe this anonymous color. Let's try it. Let's find out. Um, yeah, yeah, it's fine for a real, like, natural kind of brow color. It's not white, which I prefer, I usually prefer more of a, a lighter color just to kind of lift the brow up a little bit, which, you know, we all need that, or when you get past 30, you gotta, you start needing that stuff that you didn't even know you needed before. And I've always done this before, um, you know, before I even knew really that it just lifted the eye. I remember being a teenager and, you know, I've always been really into makeup before I, you know, got to be a, into makeup artistry and stuff. And I, um, I remember doing this and a friend of mine, I remember her looking at me one day and she was like, how do you know how to put the white underneath your eyebrow? And I thought about it and, you know, I don't know how I knew because there was no such thing as YouTube. They didn't, I mean, internet wasn't even a thing. So I, I don't know how I knew. I just, I just did. It was weird. Anyway, it was one of the one of the few things that I just intrinsically knew doing makeup. So um, I'm gonna go in with this color laced, which I is I mean when I swatched it when I touched it for the first time I was like whoa that's that's a buttery matte color and it's like a very it's a kind of a pinky mauvey nude. So I'm gonna take that on a what's this a Sigma tapered blending E40 tapered blending brush and I'm gonna go ahead and 
just blend that into the crease. And I like this brush because what I do is I dip it in all around. So all around, you know, all around the brush there. And then when you put it on, you know, it's pretty sloppy application, but it still turns out because it fits right into your socket. And, you know, I thought, oh, this is too, I have pretty big eyes. So, you know, this may not work for everyone's application. Like I think if you have hooded lids or something, you know, I'd, I, I would probably use a different brush. Um, and maybe not just slop it on like I'm doing. But for me, you know, I just fit it right into the socket there and I'm able to go ahead and fluff it on there. It works pretty good. So it just blends up into the crease, just kind of creating a transition color. So this is pretty much usually how I do all of my makeup. I figure out what color I want to do under the brow and then what color I want to do as a transition color. Um, you know, usually it's a white and a nude. So, okay, actually I think I'm going to go into the color Heat and Blitz. I'm going to do an orange and a gold kind of look here. So that's these two colors. So this is Heat and that's Blitz. So I'm going to take this flat, the flat end of the brush that comes with the palette, the, um, which, you know, they're pretty good. I'll just use it since, I mean, I already used it on the anonymous color for under my brow. And I'm just going to put that on the inside portion of my eye. So basically inside like that, the lighter color. inside half and then other eye and you can see that these apply pretty nicely now if you did a sticky base or a white base or if you got it wet it would be way more intense and you know pigments like it actually reminds me a lot of the makeup geek um what's the gold pigment called i don't know let me see what's it called liquid gold and that pigment's insane. It's amazing. Her products are amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna take that, put it on the inside, inside half. I'm gonna just clean off the brush. I always keep a rag with me and just clean off the brush. Like I just back and forth clean it off the color. And I do have spot cleaner that I'll use after if I, you know, um, on my brushes after I use them. So then I'm gonna take heat, which again is that orange. And we'll put it on the outside half here. And again, this would also look really cool if you were to do a um, do it wet or with a sticky base or a white base. But because it's dry, it's gonna be a little bit less intense, which I think most people would appreciate. You know, um, I I like intense looks. That's actually my ideal, but you know. Okay, so see how it's half and half. And then you just going to go in and you want to blend, blend them. Blend the middle. Blending is the key. And you can go back into Blitz, the old gold, and kind of blend it into the... You just do back and forth, back and forth until you meet somewhere, you know, a happy medium that, you, that you're happy with. Um, again, makeup is, is art. Makeup is fun. There's no rules. So, you know, you want to not blend them and have there be a straight up line in the middle. That's, that's your prerogative. People, people, you know, people are going to judge you. I think it was Chanel that said people are going to look at you no matter what. So give them something to look at. And I really appreciate that because it's, it's true. People are going to judge. So just do whatever you like. So see, I just take the two and back and forth, just blend them, blend them in. So they're, now they're half and half. All right, and it's not too intense. Like, it's, as you can see, it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty mellow. Like, I, I thought it would be a lot more intense. So, I'm going to want to go ahead and, you know, put some depth into that. So, I'm going to go into, let's see. Hmm. I usually, you know, I usually like a matte color for the outer V. Um, deeper is this, is not a matte color. It's this bronze color here. So, I'm going to go into that first and see what it looks like. And this is the thing. If... Let's, I'm going to put it in there, see if I like it. Now, if it's, you know, too shiny or, you know, not what I'm looking for, then um, I can always go back into a darker color, a different color, and cover it up. It's, it's not a big deal. So, this is a tip that 
I learned years ago and it helps tremendously. You know how when you're putting makeup into the crease and if you just go in there, it like it can drag down and then you end up having to clean it up and do all this stuff. So if you set your mirror up and you look down into it, so I have a mirror right here and you know, I flip it. So I'm looking down into it and then you can see your crease and you can see the ball, you know, of your eye and you put it right where the crease is and then you don't have to clean it up as much. You know, it's not perfect every time, but what is? And you just go in there and kind of create that, see? And then it just adds that depth without it dragging. Sometimes it'll, you know, get all up under here and then you have to clean it up, adding an extra step. So if you do that on both sides. And yeah, I actually do like this deeper color. Now it's you know, it's not that dark, like if I wanted to go for a really dramatic look, there's a color in here that's perversion, which is, you know, the, the black, black color um, that Urban Decay is known for in many of its products, so. So once the placement's there, then you just keep adding it until... Anyways, so I was adding the... You just keep adding it until it gets as dark as you want it. And see? It went a little bit outside on this side, so I'll just clean it up. You just take take a brush or your beauty blah, 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 your beauty blender, <laughs> whatever it is, and just you know clean it up, okay? And then I'm gonna go back in with my shadow brush, the fluffy shadow brush, and just kind of blend it out again with a little bit of that laced color, just on top there above the dark crease color just to kind of add, um, blend it out so it's not just like so dark there. So I said I was going to do a neutral look and although I did go into gold and orange, it's pretty, it's pretty neutral. Like I don't, I don't think it's that crazy. I don't think it's that, um, intense. Um, I'm actually pretty surprised at how these, I've never used this palette so this is also kind of a first impression here for me. I um, am surprised at how blended, how they just blended down. I mean, it's, um, you know, Urban Decay is known for being really pigmented and for it to just like blend down to this is just pretty interesting. So, um, you know, well, it's actually a little bit more neutral than I would even like, but you know, I like, well, again, <laughs> I like some crazy ass color. So if you like crazy ass color, you keep watching because I'll, I'm sure I'll come up with some stuff. Now, I, mean, I don't mean like, you know, I do some pretty clowny looks every once in a while, but, you know, I like, it's weird. I have very pale skin, but I pull off, you know, I don't know, some looks that maybe I don't pull them off. Hey, that maybe that's, maybe that's really what happens. So I'm just going to go in back to heat. That's that orange color that I put on the outside and just kind of deepen, you know, enrich that a little bit. Kind of got blended away there not nearly as pigmented as I had wanted it. All right, so that's pretty much it. I mean, that's the shadow look. So I'm gonna add some liner. In fact, maybe I'll take this uh, perversion liner and uh, go ahead and tight line. Well, I'm gonna tight line my eye with perversion pencil liner and then go ahead and take that and kind of smudge it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that perversion pencil liner here. Um, here we go, just a black, black Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On pencil liner. And to tight line, you just go right up in your waterline, upper waterline. And you can, this seems kind of crazy, but you can pull your eye up and that line right there, see that, you just draw on that. And this is a trick that I learned in high school. I remember there was this girl that I went to school with. I won't name her name, you know, just cause for internet purposes, but uh, she was, she was kind of a tough broad. And I was friends with her, but I was also kind of scared of her. And she did this with her eyeliner. And I remember, you know, one day watching her do it. And I was like, what are you doing? What is that amazing trick that you, you're doing and she was like oh I put it up under here and I was like you can't do that you know because I was you know how old was I maybe 15 or something and so you know makeup had rules for me at that time and anyway that's where I learned that trick so 
So for tight lining, I mean for doing the, I'm just going to take another, this is our Real Techniques, what is it, it's the, oh I don't know, but it's the angled liner brush. I'm going to go into Perversion here, which is the black color on the palette. And I'm going to go ahead. Now I tend to do winged liner. It's my it's my favorite. So I'm just gonna go on the edge here, see, and draw my wing. The thing that's great about powder as liner is if you if you F up, you can always just smudge it out and go with that look. You don't have to keep crisping up the line and blah blah blah. You just you just stir it with powder, you know, so it's more movable than gel or liquid where you have to basically wipe off your entire liner to reapply it or fix it. With this, it's just kind of, you know, you can blend it away easier. So, and again, this would also apply much deeper in color if you got it wet, just like the shadows. So, yeah, and Q-tips, Q-tips. Yeah, I'm sticking it in my mouth and I'm putting it. It's my face. I'll do what I want with it. Thanks. <laughs> I do that. I don't do it on clients. Don't worry. I've trained it out of myself. But if just to clean up the edge there and get it actually, you know, to get it more pointy up. Because I tend to like, you know, I like it more pointed. And you just... Keep on making it as dark as you want. So that's, you know, that's it. And then to get the other side, you know, again, eyeliner, they're, you know, sisters, not twins. So not going to be perfect. But you got to, you try your hardest. That's all you can do. Just like the eyebrows, right? So you just go in there. And draw it on like you were with the other side and this side always I can never get it as crisp I don't know if it's because I'm right-handed and I have to reach across my face and this is my left eye or what but and then just and something problem I always have with eyeliner too is it always bleeds in the inner corner always it's so frustrating and so I actually really like gel liner for that so sometimes if I'm using a liquid I'll do liquid liner you know across the whole eye and then I'll do a gel just there in that inner corner just to prevent it from bleeding so much because gel liner just it's it's doesn't budge as much as liquid liner so it's easier just to put in there so that's that. That's my that's my liner. I think it came out, you know, pretty good, pretty even. Another thing I've been noticing has been happening a lot more lately, and I talk to my friends about it, is a skipping. Eyeliner skips. Girls, when you get older, a warning, it skips. It you you used to be able to just whoop slide it on. Uh no, not so much. It's like it it just it skips. And I was talking to my girlfriends about it and they were like, oh I thought it was because you know the product we use isn't good or and I was like no it's cuz we're old we're old bitches <laughs> we're getting old ladies so that's something I'm always trying to fix so you know I'm gonna go ahead and do you don't have to do the lower you what you can do is you know you could see some of the because I tight lined some of the liner stamped down on the bottom so you know you can always wipe that off if you want with a q-tip but I'm gonna go with it and uh, you know, make this more dramatic. So, again, water lined. Put the liner in there. And then, this is something I used to do in high school. I would just do the water line and that's it. And I thought, oh, that's cool. That's what I'm going for, right? The not smudged out or anything. But I actually, you know, now that I'm a makeup artist, I know to smudge it, even if you're just going for that and you're not putting any more color underneath, you know, it just to do that extra little smudge it out, it just makes it, unless you're going for the crisp black on the waterline, that's it, look. It just adds an extra little, you know, something. So, see I do pretty dramatic liner for some, um, but again, my eyes, I have big buggy eyes, so I, I gotta, I gotta put something in that space or else it just looks buggy. 
So anyway, I think I'm going to smudge some color underneath too. So I think I'll go into heat, which again is that orange, that orange color that I love. And I'm just going to smudge that under. Use the flat, I'm using the flat side of that shader. I'm going to smudge it under there. And see how it just adds a little something. Go on the other side and do it. And then what I like to do usually after I do this is I take whatever transition color I used. If I add color underneath, I take whatever transition color I used on a, um, you know, like a blender brush. And I blend it under it just to kind of add, usually add some warmth because I typically use warm. So it's, it's a small thing. You might not even notice it on camera, but it just, you know, kind of blends it out so it's not so harsh under there. And, um, you know, you got to be careful though, because I've also had the experience that when I do this, if I go too low, like with a dark brown or something, I look like I got those hang, hang dog eyes, you know, the, where I'm, I look like that because it, it, it pulls your eyes down. So, um, anyway, I'm going to go in and curl my lashes, you know, I'm sure we all know how to do this. You take the lash curler, you squish it in there. And you clamp down, and I do one, two, three, four, five, and then I hold it for a second. And then, you know, I have pretty little lashes, but I can see that they're curled. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, hold it. All right. And then I've been loving this clump crusher, um, CoverGirl Clump Crusher. It's, uh, I had it forever because I, I do this thing where I buy stuff and then I put it in a drawer and don't use it. I'm sure we all do that, right? <laughs> I hoard my makeup. And oh, I do my bottom lashes first because if you do your top first and then your bottom, when you go to do them, then they'll stamp, uh, you know, little specks up on top. Now, I, sometimes I forget, but I try to train myself. So whenever I lose, learn a new tip, I do this thing where I'll train myself to, um, to do it. So I'll, I'll consciously think like, oh, I remember this tip, let's do that, you know, and then, and then I do it and then it becomes like second nature and I don't have to think about it. So I also, for the longest, I was doing my eyes and then my foundation because of the fallout, you know, if you do that and that's what you're supposed to do if you were wearing a smoky eye or a really dark eye makeup or really bright or something, do your eyes, then do your foundation just to clean it up. Um, Alright, and then I'm going to move on to the top. Just wiggle, you got to go in. I've seen some friends of mine and they're just like this, you know, not so, I'm being dramatic. But you got to, what I, you know, this tip that I know is you jab in there into the lash line and wriggle it up. You know, and you can move your brush whichever way, you know, but just really get in there and shake those mofos those hairs, shake them up. And it's hard, you know, I'm putting mascara on, it's hard on yourself because you're basically jabbing an implement into your eyes. That's why fake lashes are amazing because you can just kind of slop on some mascara. I mean, even for your personal, you slop on some mascara. doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to be good mascara. And then you can just cover it up with some fake lashes, some falsies. But I'm not going to wear falsies. I don't usually wear them unless it's a special occasion or you know, going somewhere nice, or sometimes if I'm just feeling fancy, then I'll do it. But anyway, you get up in there and then comb them out. And the reason this mascara is amazing is because it like coats every lash. And if you don't have a lot of lashes like me, it just like, it, and it doesn't clump. It's called Clump Crusher. So I put that on usually as a base. And then I'll use another one with it. Now I've been experimenting. I actually, I have this perversion, little Urban Decay perversion, you know, it just came out, I think maybe what, November, December, something, little perversion um, sample. And so I'll go ahead and, and, you know, coat that. I let it dry. The key is to let it dry for a couple minutes because if you go and coat and coat and coat, you're just combing through wet products, like through your lashes over, you know, and it just, that's why it gets clumpy. So I wait a couple